All right, what's going on, guys? I am here with Mr. Daniel Integrity. Daniel Integrity Painting, baby. That's what it's all about. He's also running the Integrity Painting Podcast. So uh, today we are going to talk about how Daniel took his business from 1.7 million to 4.2 in one year, purely off networking, word of mouth, and everything else in between. So Daniel, dude, super excited to have you here, man. I've heard amazing things about you. Thanks. Yeah, awesome, dude. So what would you say is kind of like the biggest factor as to, you know, why you decided to start building all this network? Like what really kind of got you so ingrained in building network and where did you kind of find that importance? Because you, you said you've been in business for about 12 years and it's only recently you kind of made that that transition to focusing solely on relationships or not solely, but having a heavy focus on relationships. Yeah. And that allowed you to kind of 2.5 X your business in a year. Yeah. So we've always, um, we've always been focused on building relationships with people. Um, it's just been like recently that we have really like, we've been able to hire people that can help us build more relationships. So, um, I think I was just so limited in my time. Um, I, we didn't have, we had a project manager, but we didn't have a sales guy. Um, I was doing a lot of the office work still. Um, I was doing I was doing all the estimates, office work, and then I was running like three or four jobs too to help our project manager because he was doing like 10, 12 jobs a week in by himself. And it was just like, you know, I was always out there trying to help him out. So once we hired a coach, um, Eric Barstow, um, once we hired him, um, we, we noticed, and after going to the PCA, like we noticed that, um, we were missing a lot of people on our team and that if we hired, um, some people to help us, um, on our, and help us uh, with some things that I was spending too much time on, that it would be able to free up some more time so that I could spend more time building relationships and, um, building our company. So, um, it was nice because I was able to, um, hire our office lady, Ashley. And uh, she actually was from Sherwin Williams. Like she worked there for 10 years. And so when I found out she was available, like we tracked her down. We, we seen her at the dentist's office one day and we're like, Hey, we need you. Like, when can you start? And she's like, really? I was like, yeah. She was like, I know you're so good at Sherwin and you have really good communication and people skills. And we know like, you're really smart. We want you to be our office person. And she was like, okay, cool. I can do that. And so we hired her that next week and, um, just having her around has been awesome. Like she just really runs the office, um, really nicely and keeps me freed up. And so, uh, with billing and man, we were having such a hard time with billing, um, me trying to do it all myself. Yeah, for sure. Um, so once we freed up a lot of different things and then uh, I met this guy, Josh, at church uh, one day. He just kept coming up to me and shaking my hand. He's like, hey, bro, how's it going? I was like, this guy's really friendly, uh, really trustworthy. I was like, we need to hire him for an estimator. And so now he's able to go around and do all of our estimates. And he does like six or seven a day. And um, people love him. I, like when I first met him, I was like, man, this guy's the coolest guy in the world. Like when I met you, I was like, man, it's like this guy's cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that dude. Yeah. So Daniel and I met at the, uh, the, was it the Benjamin Moore one at, at the expo? It was a uh, oh, Benjamin. Oh yeah. The cigars. Night, right. Yeah. The yeah. 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 The taco tacos and cigars. And then the, what is it? The opera electric music. <laughs> yeah. What the heck was that? That was the coolest song I ever heard. It was techno opera. And I was yeah. like, what is going on around interesting. here? Interesting. Very interesting pick. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was an awesome time, man. So you, you enjoyed so the expo? Yeah, I loved it, man. Uh, I took our project manager. He's actually moving up to a general manager right now where he's kind of overseeing everything. Um, and then he's he's training two project managers. Uh, the last year he's been training one and now he's tra they're training another one. Oh, wow. uh, to try to, yeah, we're trying to free him up so that he can do more, um, do more connecting with uh, builders and stuff also. Yeah, put him focusing on the on the relationships. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love that. So he's basically he's in charge of two mini PMs, and those PMs are in charge of like their crews. So it's kind of yeah. like a like a tree. Yes, okay. that's yep, solid. Exactly. That's solid. 
and how many crews are each like mini production manager? How much are they like in charge of? Um, so. Oh, are you there? Yeah, I think I lost you there. Yep. Yeah, cool. Sorry about that. So, um, yeah, I think, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, cool. Yeah, so each PM is in charge of about 10 jobs. Um, and then Ryan helps them and oversees kind of everything. And then also, he uh, also is in the office and oversees like billing and extra change orders or anything that's like additional work that needed to be done. Um, and then also he'll oversee our estimator abram and make sure that his estimates look good before sending them in um so we'll double check all of his commercial estimates so we have a commercial estimator too which is really nice i love that um yeah a abram's the the guy that you met at church right no abram so abram's my nephew he's uh, 18 years old uh right. he, he just moved up here to come work for us uh last uh, last summer um, we took him to the commercial uh, PCA in Nashville, and he loved it so much that um, he what he is going to school for um, a, uh, to be a pilot. Oh no way! Yep, but he's like, man, I just love doing these estimates. I want to do this, you know, I want to do this full time and also get my pilot license. And I'm like, well, let's do both. Like, I'll help you get your pilot license and let's do estimates together. And he was super excited about that. So that's his main goal. And um, I was actually just talking to a guy that has a plane uh, yesterday and I guess uh, he has like a con construction company mm -hmm. and he flies his plane to Aspen and Denver to look at jobs. And I was like, mm, maybe I could make a deal with them or something and get yeah, my that's life. That's pretty cool. Through. I think like, you know, five years from now, that would be something that would be really nice to, if we're, once we get to that level, you know, I mean, we're planning to get to 10 million here in a couple of years. So big enough to be able to fly to estimates with a plane. That's, that's a, yeah. And it's only, that's a nice, uh, little, that's a nice little uh, treat there. I love that. <laughs> well, it's only about an hour and a half away. So it's like, I think it's our next uh, reasonable move. Uh, we thought about Utah and Moab, which is like an hour away. Mm -hmm. uh, we're probably still going to do that, but Salt Lake is just too far. And I'll just send Spencer everything I got over No, there. no, go go take Spencer's jobs there, man. He doesn't need them. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Spencer's, <laughs> Spencer's going to give you shit after this. <laughs> I, I actually joined his uh, Utah his Utah group, uh, the Utah Painters clan that he started on Facebook. Oh, yeah? Are you going to the meeting? I think they're uh, they're hosting it pretty soon, right? I They just had one, and I guess a lot of people went there, and actually one of the guys flew in. So that's where I got the idea. I was like, hmm, this guy's flying in. I got to fly in too. Damn. Maybe maybe sometime down the road though. That's crazy, man. And so, I mean, looking like 24 months ago, right, before you were kind of leveling up into all this coaching, into the networking, did you ever think you'd be having conversations about flying into meetings no. like on your own plane? Like how, how cool is that to think about, dude? Like how yeah. far you've come? You know, we didn't know that painting could get to this uh to this level or to higher levels like we were meeting people at the pca that were doing 10 million 20 million and i never heard of that like you know we're in a smaller town of like maybe the tops 160,000 people like uh, with all the surrounding areas around like we're not in a big city so like um just to hear that people are able to have a team and be able to make those numbers and not have to like just be overseeing and making sure operations are going good. Like that's impressive. I, I could see that for like bigger companies or like different companies, but in the painting industry, I didn't even know that was a real thing. And so once I met these people, I'm like, Hey, can I have your number? Like, I need help. Like, can you teach me stuff? And they're like, yeah, sure. And like, there were so many people that were so helpful, like Juan over at illusions. Like I called him all the time last year. So. I love that, man. I love that. Yeah. I, I think there is something beautiful about that. It's like when you surround yourself with people that are a lot higher than where you are, it kind of like breaks your, your limiting beliefs of like, well, dude, if they're doing it, why can't I do it? You know what yeah. I mean? And there's this story of like the five minute mile, um, which was like back in the day, it was like unknown for anybody to run a single mile in five minutes. Right. And then this one guy, I forget his name, who, who, who like, who did it, but he broke that record for the first time in history. 
for recording history. He broke that record. And then like consistently, like year after year, that record kept getting broken. Just after that, this one guy hit it, then everybody mm-hmm. like had these limiting beliefs that snapped and was like, oh, if he did, I could do it too. And then they just kept breaking it and breaking it and breaking it and breaking it. And it's just, I think that's so, that's so relative to like the situation that you said is like, oh, dude, I just met someone doing 10 million. Like, why the heck can't I crush that? And then now you're like, you're, you're planning and like the next year is like, yeah, we're going to do 10 million. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, if you didn't surround yourself, you didn't put yourself in those new environments, like that wouldn't even be a, a, a thought. Yeah. And like, I'm in a group, um, like I have, I have so many friends from the PCA that um, they're all striving to get to those numbers. Like they all have plans, they have goals, they have everything mapped out. And like, since when you have something mapped out with math and numbers, like it's so much easier to see it and achieve it. It's crazy. Like, like there's, it's not just like, I might make it to 10 mil. Like I have an actual plan with math, like mapped out and it's insane. Like I know how I'm going to get there. I love that dude. I'm like telling my estimator, um, you know, today I'm like, bro, we only hit 90, 90 K in commercial this month. Like, um, day 11, I'm like, we, we have to get, you know, 110 more just to hit 2 million for the year. I was like, I was like, we got to plan ahead and make sure that we're hitting these numbers. So, um, we set goals for each estimators for our commercial estimator. He has a goal. Um, my residential estimator has a goal and they're both hitting them. They're, they're right on track. And so I, we know what our numbers are going to be um, at minimum by the end of the year. So yeah. super nice to know that and be and able being, to stay on top of it. And being very specific about those two. It's like you you just said, like, we're only at 90. We need to be at 110 in order to pace towards the goal that we're after. Yep. You know, and it's not like a guessing of just like, I hope we hit this, uh, you know, or at the end of the yep. year, we'll reassess. Like you break this down, like probably every week you have a specific goal that you're hitting or how, yep. how does that kind of look? Like, tell me a little bit about the math. Okay. So like my sales guy, he has to hit 200 K or residential. He has to hit 200 K. Um, my commercial guy, he's trying to go for 300 or sorry, not 200 K, uh, 2 million a year. So about 200 K cause we have a couple of slow months. So, uh, we're just trying to shoot higher by doing the 200 K a month. So, and he, and our, uh, residential guy, he's doing that. And then our est- our uh, commercial estimator, he's, he's on track because we won some big projects in the beginning of the year. So even though he hit 90 K he's still a little bit ahead, but we're still trying to make sure that he hits those numbers. So if they both hit 200 K a month, I mean, that's four, four to 5 million right there. And, and, you know, like in the summer, we're going to hit more than that because uh, we get so much more work in the summertime. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Demands a lot higher. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. I love that. So, what are some like of your most important relationships that you've built and how would you recommend someone to you know approach the whole relationship marketing tactic that you, you've been implementing in order to cross that million 2.5 million etc okay so um there was some relationship that we built probably 10 years ago and um it was just going in there um talking to them, asking them for a chance, asking them for a shot and um, getting them over a bid. And, you know, it doesn't have to be like, it can be a lower number. Like I think like just trying to figure out what their budget is and just making sure that, cause they can get 10 other painters in there. They don't, they're not looking for you. You're looking for them. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm like, so like just trying to get their budget, get your foot in the door and then just really establishing a good relationship. Like when they call you, you show up when they need a job done, you get it done on time. Um, and just making sure everything goes so smoothly for them that they're not going to want to look around. And so that's, that's what our goal is now is to do that with every single contractor that we meet is to give them that same service and just give them, you know, perfect, like perfect service and get things done on time. And that's what really sets us apart is that uh, we can get to the job next week, no matter how big it is. Like if someone calls me right now and they're like, Hey, like my buddy just called me. He's like, Hey, can you come paint all these metal beams? And I'm like, yeah, let me come look. I'm like, when do you need it done? He's like this weekend. I'm like, cool. No problem. And I know we can, cause we have the manpower. Like we have guys that want to work all weekend and want to make money and they want to, you know, do good for their families. So Mm -hmm. like we have guys, it's just, um, 
and everybody's always like, you're going to get to the point where you don't have enough guys. And I don't think that's possible. Um, cause we're, we're constantly hiring. Like I put ads out hiring every week. And I think that's like another thing that's different about us is like, I'm always looking for the best painter and the best contractors that are painters. Like I want all of them to work with us or for us. Like, I don't, I don't want to leave any of them out. Like, and if we have that many guys, there's just, there's just no way that we can, we can't get more work. So we have to, we're always hiring, like no matter what. And where, where do you usually like post those hiring? Like, is there a specific uh, job know, board? Shoot, I do on Indeed, uh, Facebook market. Uh, there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of community groups I'll post mm -hmm. in. Um, yeah. And then like at the Sherwin Williams, I'll, I'll when I see people, I talk to them and see how they're doing and like what they what kind of work they do. And usually they'll be like a sub a smaller subcontractor or a painter and and usually they're looking for a better opportunity and you know um uh, and i was looking for a better opportunity when i started my company and no one offered it to me so here i am i love that man <laughs> i love that are you yeah. like mainly using subs for your manpower no we we have mostly employees which i really like the employee model uh, we get a lot of time and material jobs from commercial Mm -hmm. And so that really helps us out. Um, and then um, we do have some subs um, that help us on smaller projects or exteriors or something, something that, you know, we need help on on commercial jobs. Because what happens is we'll get a big commercial job and they need 10 guys on it right away. And it's like we got we got subs like I could put three or four subs on there and then have two or three of my guys over there. And we got a crew of 10, 15 instantly. Yeah. And it's only two or three of my guys. So it's like, it makes us look, it makes us a lot more appealing to use because we can provide so much manpower with subs. So I do like having subs too. So you have like a short vendor list that if you need the manpower, you kind of like, you got subs that you go to right away, plug them in, throw a couple of your guys in there more for like quality control purposes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. On bigger projects, they'll, they'll need a couple guys to like run the job, do like make sure there's pictures coming in and the subs are just doing the painting and trying to get it done. I mean, some subs will work 15 hours a day. I mean, they're amazing, you know, where it's like the employees, they, they just want to do eight or nine hours and then they want to be with their family, which is cool too. Like it just depends on what you want to do. Yeah. I love that. And what's, what's like a low hanging fruit relationship that you could suggest for people to go after? Is it like realtors, property managers, things like that? Oh, uh, we're going after realtors and property managers right now. I have my commercial estimator calling them and stopping by their office. Um, I just got a t text message from a realtor saying that she was meeting with uh, Abram and my sales nice. guy. So I love that. So yeah. you get them to cold call them? Um, I don't like that. I feel like going in person and just like being their friend is the better idea. I think yeah. cold call, like when people call me, I, I hang up. Like I, I just... <laughs> when they come to my house and I'm like, you know what? I like this guy. Like, and then they come back and I'm like, you know, what? I really like this guy. I'm going to give him a shot. Like, you know, that's what I like. I like, I like a face to face and meeting people and just seeing like, like you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You, you got a good energy, man. I said that at the expo, like when I <laughs> met you at Benjamin Moore, you got like this cool energy to you, dude. It's, it's nice. It's, it's a, it's a good feeling for sure. But yeah, I'm even sick. I'm, but I've been sick for like a month, dude. I don't know what the heck going on <laughs> so i'm glad that i have I, a good energy because i was worried about it yeah after the expo i was dead man i was so dead it's it's very very taxing i mean i didn't even go out to the the sherwin night a, a lot of our clients were giving me shit like dude you gotta what? go you gotta come but i didn't go because we were leaving friday morning and oh, okay. we were like my team was just so gassed that i was like oh dude we're just gonna cook some cook some hamburgers have some cigars and just like chill in the last night in florida before we go back to the freaking cold Montreal, man. So yeah. it was nice, but I, I heard the Sherwin event is just outrageous. You love Florida? Time. You know what, man? The weather was selling itself to me big yeah. time. Like I came back here and my skin got so like dry and itchy. And I'm just like, dude, fuck, I don't have this in Florida, you know? So um, I do like Florida. I really, really do like Florida. How about you? I was looking at houses last night right on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can take your plane there, dude. That'll be perfect. <laughs> my my wife literally she looks up houses in Florida like every month. She's like, look at this house, look at this house. I'm like, ah, 
I mean, the price range is really good down there and it's right on the beach. It's insane. I'm like, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Get that plane and then we can make some moves. Dude, get a float plane, land right on the water right in front of your house. That'd be yeah. a good one. That'd yeah, good the one. house we were looking at, it's like in inland a little bit. Okay. But there's little canals that go through off of the beach. So like every house has its own little boat dock. Dang. That's crazy. Where where in Florida was it? Shoot. Uh it was below um where was it? It was below Sarasota. I can't remember what the exact town is. Uh it was below uh Tampa, Sarasota. It was like down there by Fort okay. Fort Myers somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Was, yeah, but we just love that. We go we go to Florida like two or three times a year. Really interesting. I, yeah, you I, should go on yeah. vacation once. You, you, if you stayed on the beach, you would love it even more. Yeah, I was thinking about going to Tampa. R- Russell Peach is trying to trying to get me to come down to Tampa. Go but, uh, do it. Yeah, I would love to hang out with him. Are you married? No, no, no. Yeah, no, definitely go there. No marriage, no kids that I know of. I'm all good, man. Girls is clear. <laughs> yeah. Would you Would you open up a second branch of Integrity down there? I don't think so. Um, I mean, I would help Russell out if I could, if he would hire me. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> you go if down there and close some jobs. Well, I know, like, there's, there's, pe- I mean, if I could sell my company and then move down to Florida and just work part time for Russell, I'd totally do that. That'd be like the funnest job ever. I'd be Russell's like, Russell's a, a cool guy. dude. R- Russell's a cool guy. I'm not gonna tell that to him to his face, but he's a cool guy, man. <laughs> he is so cool, and I like his strategy. Like every time I go to click on somebody's post, he's always already on there. You notice that he's always yeah he does comment on a lot of it's like a supportive technique yeah but then he's always popping up like new like it's always like Russell Peach Russell Peach Russell Peach it's it's an mm-hmm. interesting play I actually really like it though and like if you ever need help like if you if you text him or call him he'll like tell you everything he's like hey yeah do this that's what I do and like he's super nice and helpful I think that's like that's another thing that's really important for building a big business like like he has is like just like being really nice to people and helping them out all the time. And he's good at that. Like he makes friends and remembers so many people's names. Like it's crazy. Yeah. He's really that's a good skill. I wish I had more. Uh, I wish I was more more like that. That's crazy. Like being able to remember people's names and things. Yeah, like he knows, like I'll just go up and start talking to somebody and Russell will just come out of nowhere and be like, oh yeah, I know that person <laughs> and start talking to him. Like, how does he know everybody? He's a networker. That's that's yeah. for sure. He, that's he's fun. definitely got a lot of reach in the industry, man. He's <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy. So you, you would sell your business and then what would you exit for? Like what, if you could, if someone like wrote a check right now and there could be any number on it, obviously not like ridiculously high. I would never but, sell. Well, really? You wouldn't? No, what I would do though is I would get a partner and I would have them run everything, which is kind of like what we're doing right now anyway. Like Mm -hmm. we have my my PM, he's moving up. Um, We're working on getting him percentages and then uh, we're just going to have him run everything. So uh, hope nobody nobody hears this, but I'm just kidding. (laughs) I love that, dude. That's awesome. So if you could like, have you ever heard of like the fishing test? Hmm? The fishing test, like, uh, what is it? Okay, so there's a, it's this old kind, of, like, I guess business thing. Um, I got it from one of my colleagues, Ammer, and basically what he does, it's it's called the fishing test of like, can you leave your business and go on a fishing trip without worrying about, you know, all the relationships burning, all yeah. the productions burning? Like, can you actually just go and not have to worry about coming back to just like, oh yeah, a shit, a shit show? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, can you take it? You could take that, like, at four point yeah. two million, you could just dip go to florida for two weeks no oh, yeah. nothing come back totally. running. yeah easy yep I, and you know i've been practicing and i've been training and uh you know my my main guy ryan he's been with me for 10 years like he's running everything for me now uh the best move i ever did was hire him as a project manager uh he was a painter for me for years and then uh, when, when, uh, I was looking for a project manager, I was like, Hey man, I really need your help. I can't do this anymore. It's too stressful. And he stepped up and just took over and like, he just crushed it. And it was amazing. Like how, how skilled he is and like how good he is at talking and like, uh, just communicating and training. And he's just so, uh, he's just such a hard worker. Like, like he just, he made it so much easier for me. So for me to give him a percentage of the company and, uh, let him run it eventually would be, I mean, 
that we actually went to a couple classes down at the PCA for uh, for that exact topic. So, um, and that's why I was talking to uh, Tara Tara Riley. Yeah, that's why I'm talking yep. to her because she's really good at that kind of stuff. Uh, man, she's cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's the president of Fresh Coat. And yeah. you were, I saw you, you, you're burning up the cigar with her. That's cool. That's yeah, really I'll cool. post that picture on here when we're done. That was so cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's baller, man. It was baller. I went yeah. to her presentation. It was actually really solid. Like, I'm not in painting. Obviously, like, I have an agency for painters, but I'm not specifically, like, I don't run a painting business. I don't mm. plan on running a painting business, but I was taking notes on there, you know, because it was a lot of good information. Did you, did you attend her, her presentation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, yeah, we attended hers. I didn't even know it was, I didn't even know it was her. Like I met her at the last PCA and the commercial PCA and me and her talked and hung out a couple of times. And I didn't even know who she was. I just knew she was cool. So every time I go, I say, Hey, what's up? And we talk for a while. And then just to be in her class randomly, I'm like, what? I didn't even know she was like <laughs> this big shot, uh, franchise, uh, built 300 companies in the last couple of years, like over millions of dollars. I'm like, dang, it's like, I got to get her number. She's a crusher, dude. She's a crusher yeah. for sure. What, what was your, your favorite? Because I heard that the PCA Expo this year, like the content and like all the panels and all the, you know, the, the presentations and everything was like insane. Like they really like stepped it up. That's what I heard. I mean, this was my first one that I've ever attended, but I mean, I genuinely like loved it. Like, yeah, I really, really liked it. But you, you've been to other ones before, right? Yeah, I just been to the one last year. Um, we went to that one, and I was like, "Wow, I didn't know they had a thing like this." Like, to have all the painters from around the country meet together, even from Canada, like that's just crazy. Like, yeah, <laughs> I even met a couple other guys that were big dogs up there too. I mean, there's a lot of business up there, but um, that's cool that you know I was able to meet all these people, and um, I think. Um, the PCA, it's just the class. I can't wait to watch every single video. I hope they release them all soon so I can get with my guys and have them all watch it. I want them to all be in on every single thing that I'm learning and just be able to provide um, and grow the company with me. So, yeah. And so where did you find it was it's Ryan, your PM, right? Yeah. Where, where did you find Ryan? So I knew him when we were younger. Um um, I think I knew I even probably was friends with some of his friends in high school. And then we connected over a couple of times we met, we hung out. And then um, he was actually painting for another guy. Um, and I was painting for another company. Um, I originally I have like two or three years of painting experience before I even started my company. So uh, we knew each other. And then I, I wasn't my boss wasn't going to give me a raise. I was making like minimum wage and I couldn't get a dollar raise for like a year. And so I called uh, Ryan and I'm like, Hey, could you give me a job with your company? And he was like, well, let me check. He's like, you know, and then he was like, you know, this guy's not paying me. Um, I don't really want to work for this guy anymore. And I was like, well, cool. I'm like, I'm starting my own company. Uh, do you want to come work with me? And he was like, oh, I'll think about it. And then like a couple years later, um, that guy still was like not paying him very well. And he wasn't enjoying being over there. And he was like, Hey, I'll come work for you. And I was like, cool. And so I got, I was like so excited to have like a real professional painter come work with me. Cause it's hard when you're first starting out to find professional painters, like mm -hmm. they don't want to work for somebody that just started their company. They're, they're happy to work for big, big companies that can pay on time and pay really well give him the independence of like oh he knows what he's doing he go, go alone kind of thing yeah, yeah. no I, I hear you so so that's how you got him and how did you retain him because i mean keeping an employee for 10 years is that's definitely a pat on the back you know i just paid him every time that you know even if i didn't have the money i would figure it out and pay him first and um that's how i paid all my guys i would always pay them first and then i'd pay sherwin last of course um just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would always pay uh, pay my guys first. And then um, I didn't make very much money the first few years. Like, I don't think I was making anything really. Um, but I was making sure that they always got paid. And so everyone knows that works for me, that they're always going to get a check no matter what. And um, people like that. Like, they like to have work somewhere where they get paid, right? I mean, <laughs> how many times that I work somewhere that I didn't get a paycheck after working two weeks? It's It sucks, you know? Yeah. 
And so, and then just, you know, being honest with them and, and we just have a really open, honest relationship about everything. And, um, you know, once he became my project manager, he just, he just really went after, uh, trying to grow the company and it really helped out a lot and he's good at relationships too. So I love that. So if you were to ever exit, not saying that you will, you would give him kind of the, the key, the keys to the castle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's already showing me that this last, you know, couple of years, uh, he's been moving up, trying to run, help me run stuff. Um, I mean, we have 20 jobs going on right now and I'm able to sit here calmly and talk to you. And this has been my life, uh, for the last like six months. Like I, I don't have to do anything if I don't want to. Um, I want to grow the company and I want to get more connections and I want our guys to be more efficient. So that's why I am in the field every day, but I do, I do have the freedom, uh, to go to Mexico for two weeks if I, if I want to, or to come to the PCA or, um, go on a trip. Um, I want to do some sales classes with my guys. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I got that plan, my estimator, I want to take them to some estimating classes and to the commercial PCA. So I have a lot of stuff planned with them also. And, uh, just having that freedom allows me to take them and go learn with them and help them out. So I love that. So how, how, how much time do you typically invest in your own team in terms of like coaching them, um, training them, et cetera? Well, I mean, it depends on if you count the late nights because I'll send them videos that I find. Like I sent your video to uh, my sales guy uh, earlier which, today. Which one? The one you just posted. Oh, with uh, Joel? Yeah. Oh, the, the ballpark one? Yeah, that was a cool one. That was actually in Florida. Yeah, I send those out. Like every time I see something good, I send it to my guys and go, hey, watch this in the morning. Hey, watch this in the morning. This is good information. Let's implement this. And so I'm constantly sending them information, uh, going through videos, um, going through different things and just like, you know, with Eric Barstow and all that, like every time I learn something from him, I send it to them. Um, so yeah, constantly. And I'm, I'm down at the office a couple hours a day and I'm going around job sites, taking videos and pictures and posting on Facebook sometimes. So yeah, I love that, man. I love that. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing the video, dude. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love, I mean, that's just the beautiful thing about social media. It's like how, how easy it is to convey value. You know what I mean? Like I, I was talking about like this with like one of my, actually Joel, who, who was in that video of like, dude, every single day you do things that other people would find so valuable that you just don't recognize as valuable. Like you just think of it as like the day to day. You know what I mean? Like you go meet a realtor, you're talking to them, you're building that relationship, whatever. If you were to record that, you know, it's like, that would be of tremendous value to someone, but you just do that. It's like, it's just a muscle that you just keep flexing and flexing and flexing. But other people like would find that so incredibly valuable, you know, and at the expo, uh, we had a videographer out there and he was recording everything for us. And there's even things in there. I'm like, Oh dude, I freaking forgot we did that. And it's just like, it, it's so cool to be able to document that, you know, that, that type of stuff. And we're in such an interesting time. And I know you're big on social media. So like, yeah. How, how often do you go to the job site? How often do you post? Um, you know, I know you started your, the, the integrity painting podcast. How often are you doing that? Just tell me, tell me a little bit about like the, uh, the whole social push that you're doing right now. Yeah. So, um, I really like being able to make videos and meet people and just like, think about how long this meeting would have took us if we were to meet in person, like I'd have to fly all the way up there hang out with you and we can just do it in uh, 30 minutes. Like yeah. we already know each other. Like it's crazy. You're and, more than welcome to come by the way. <laughs> and so you, you can do that online. Like I have so many friends online. When I meet somebody, I instantly find them online, add them to my Facebook or my LinkedIn, depending on how professional they are. And I'll, I'll add them and then I'll comment and I'll like their stuff and I'll just, I'll keep talking to them and sending them, pictures or messages or videos that I think they're interested in. And I'll just try to get to know them because like, I don't really have time to go hang out with them for a couple hours, but I can send them a text or a, a video in one second and it helps build a relationship or I can like their post or comment on their post, Like, and it really helps speed that up um, so that, you know, 
we can start moving forward. And then when we see each other, it's like, Hey, what's up, buddy? Like we've known each other for years, you know? Yeah. Like me and yeah. Russell have been friends for years, but we just met like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. And I like, that's something I see too, is just like, it's so easy to build relationships like over the internet now with like the video calls and things like that. Like it's, it's just cool. Like at the expo, I was trying to like, I was playing a game with myself of just like, guessing how tall people are because you could never like really tell over, over like a zoom call about how tall they are or what, you know, yeah. the build, whatever. And I was like having a game where I was trying to like play in my head of just like guessing how tall certain people are or whatever. And I had people tell me the same thing that they were doing the same thing. And they're like, Oh dude, you're actually tall. And I'm like, bro, am I giving off short vibes on zoom? It's like, it's such like a, it's so funny, dude. It's just, and you, you never know, like meeting people in person is like completely different, but it's, just so beautiful being able to meet people online, like what we're doing right now. Yeah. But then like when we meet in person, like at the expo next year, like our chemistry is just going to be so much more strong because it's just yeah. like over time, you just build that relationship. So I love that dude. Yeah. I've met, I've met people in town that are like, like, man, I thought you were so much bigger. Cause usually when I stand next to my wife, she's like five foot and you know, hundred, 110 pounds. And I'm like two twenty. And when they, when I see a picture, they're like, think I'm like this giant freaking monster. And then they see me and I'm just like, you know, regular size. I'm like, yeah. no, you're a big dude, bro. You're yeah, a big but dude. I'm you not like, broad shoulders. Yeah, but I'm not like, no, they like think I'm like the rock, but he's probably the same size <laughs> as me too. He just looks bigger. And yeah. on, he looks bigger on the, on the thing, but who's like huge Hulk Hogan. I think maybe they think I'm like Hulk Hogan or something. Like, dude, you know, who's really tall is uh, like Chris Bross. I don't know. Oh, if you really? Were. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. He's like six, 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 seven. You like walked up at the PPG event. I was like, holy smokes, bro. You're, you're so tall. And he's, he's like the, the sweetest guy ever, like such a good, like nice guy. But I did not like expect him to be so tall. And I was like, holy smokes, yeah. man. crazy. But it's crazy. Yeah. People like they look totally different or I mean, not in a bad way, but like you just see him in person. You're like, oh, like I don't even, I have to look at my, like sometimes like on the plane, I was looking at people's faces on Facebook through four or five different photos just to make sure I didn't mess it up when I met them. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you pass them, you make eye contact and then it like starts to like, Oh wait, that was whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to like put a name to their face. Cause I don't want to be a, a jerk. Like I've been talking to them for a year. Like, and then I show up and they're like, Hey, it's me. And I'm like, who? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to be that guy. So I'll like, I was like, memor like I was memorizing their faces and their names and like trying to make sure that I said hi to every single person. I was like so nervous about meeting everybody at the PCA because these guys are cool, man. They're, They're really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's such a cool thing that everybody just like gets together one time a year for something that big, you know? And I think next year is that it's in Vegas, right? So that's not too far from you. So you're going to. No, shaking your head. It's not in Vegas. Oh well, damn! I've been. I, I can't tell you where it's at. Oh, uh, okay. He's got the. Uh, top I think secret. I think it was in Vegas. I think there. I I haven't heard the exact details of where it's at yet, but I'm hoping it's somewhere cool. But it's definitely. I guess it's definitely not in Vegas. But uh, we'll see. I'll let you know soon as I find out. They gotta bring it to Canada, man. We gotta we gotta warm them up to Canada. It's just I think population. It's like Canada's. I think the population of Canada is smaller than the entire state of California. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. We don't have that many, that many people over here. No wonder you're not married. There's no girls there. I know, dude. What the heck? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go down to Florida, man. I gotta go to yeah. Fort Myers. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, we'll to, yeah. I think, uh, I think we'll have to plan. I want to do like a big thing again. I, I wish they had more PCAs like every month. That would be so cool. That would be cool. We should. We There's should a commercial one coming up. Really? Where? Yeah, it'll be like the commercial PCA. We I went to one like in the middle of summer. It was in uh, Nashville. Oh, that'd be fun. So there's two. It's just one's more commercial based than the other, which it's a little bit smaller. But then you can meet like more commercial people and um, stuff like that, which was what I've been trying to do. So, dude, we should get like we should get a kind of like a gathering going like yeah. we, we, you and I could like pull some strings and like use our network, leverage our network and just get like one, I don't know, just like a weekend somewhere. I think that'd be so cool, man. We could like, you could talk to like Eric Barstow and we could do like our 
like little discussions and little like web not webinars, but like, uh, you know, courses and things like yeah. that in person. I think that'd be pretty, pretty cool to do, man. Oh, I was thinking we could do like this huge meetup where we have like 50 people that enter into our room and we just like sit there and talk about painting and like, you know, marketing or whatever. And like, we just have like 20 people in there. Dude, I'd be down for that, man. I don't know like, why people don't do that more. We should. We should do yeah. it. Okay. Dude, Florida. We got to go back to Florida, man. No, I would honestly, like, I was looking at even like Phoenix. Phoenix is a, is a cool place. I was, because I mean, Canada, it's like very, very cold. Like, you can't really see, but behind me, it's also like snow and ice. Mm. And I'm looking at places to move in the States, maybe for like six months of the year. Yeah. Um, I was looking at Phoenix, Texas, and Florida. You can do that, right? Because you yep. you can work mobile. Yep. So, so I went to Phoenix last year. It was so cool. Like if you go there in the summertime, it's like a hundred and I think it was like a hundred and seven degrees. Oh my god! Like Jeez. I just walk outside and my whole body just warmed up, and I was like, oh, <laughs> so good. And then after like two minutes, I was like, okay, let's go back inside. <laughs> Or let's find the pool, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. But dude, we should we should organize a little like fun little Phoenix meetup. Phoenix is sweet. Yeah, I love I love anything north or south is is great for me. I I'm with you. I'm sick of the cold. Like it's cold here. I'm wearing a hoodie right now, and I miss Florida. So yeah, me too, man. We'll call it the uh, the Ford Media Integrity Painting Getaway. <laughs> yeah, we should plan one. I mean. It'll be a good idea. I think I know people would love to come to see everybody and we could get some big shots there like Russell or Spencer. Like Spencer probably has like a big following too, you know, Russell, yeah. Spencer. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of cool people we could get down there. I'd be down, dude. We should we should organize that, man. I mean, yeah. anybody that's watching this, if drop a comment below if you want us to organize that and we can make it happen. Yeah, how many people are watching? I didn't even it's, look. It's oh, it's not live. I'm gonna be pu publishing it after. But oh, we're gonna, okay. yeah, people are gonna be commenting only if they watch this part. But I think we could get some fun going, man. I'd be totally up for that. Okay. And then we could do this podcast in person, bro. There we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, if we get like 50 comments of people wanting to go, we'll start organizing it. But if there's only two or three, we're not we're not gonna waste our time. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Awesome, brother, dude. I appreciate you so much, Daniel. This has been awesome. Yeah. Any, any other final thoughts before we wrap up? No. Uh, yeah, I think me and you should get together. Um, you know, I want to get more into the media stuff, uh, me, the marketing and all that. So, yeah, let's let's talk, man. It sounds like a good good. Give me a call. We'll make it happen. I'll get you some hats and some merch as well, brother. But you got to give me all some right. of that integrity painting stuff. That looks good. Yeah, I'll bring it. Yeah, you know, that's one thing, like – I should have ordered hats. I didn't even think about like ordering them until like the week before. And I was like, dang, I'm not going to be able to bring enough. <laughs> and so I like had two hats, but I didn't want to hand them out. Cause I was afraid that if I gave them to two people, everybody would be like, Oh, this guy screwed us all over. <laughs> so I just got scared. I didn't hand out any of them. I was like, uh, but, uh, next time I'm getting like a hundred hats. I'm ordering so many hats. I'm just going to hand them out. Cause yeah, dude, make it rain with the hats. I think that's a good call. Yeah, people love that. They love to get hats. So yeah, even shirts. I gave so many shirts, and I've seen like videos, like people like post a photo or something, and they're wearing it. And I'm like, oh, that's so freaking uh, cool, man. That's really yeah. cool to see. Like that one guy, he was wearing your shirt, and he went viral. Aiden, Aiden, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aiden was rocking it in his thing, and I was like, dude, that's so cool to see, man. Yeah. Heck yeah, I have to get one of your shirts. I go viral. <laughs> yeah, I got you, bro. I'll send that out to you. <laughs> awesome, bro. So, um, dude, thank you so much, man. This has been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Bye.